let's go. Let's let's see what this article has. Many curries and stews from around the world are made of tum with turmeric, which gives them a yellowish hue and a peppery ginger-like taste. Turmeric and it, and well, the, the fact is that turmeric is from the ginger family. Mm -hmm. In any yes, case, yes. turmeric and the chemical company derived from it called curcumin mm -hmm. have some amazing health benefits. Mm -hmm. In addition to being an anti-inflammatory that helps boost circulation. Turmeric may also be an anti-cancer, antioxidant therapy that can fight off brain plaques, mm -hmm. possibly preventing diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and more. And unlike a lot of other vitamins and supplements, it's cheap. Okay. In other words, you could go and buy a pound in the health food shop, or mm -hmm. if you, if you go to your, if you go in the country by your by your auntie, mm -hmm. and go in the backyard and dig up dig up a few roots and bring it home. Yeah. Doctors are increasingly embracing the idea that the food we eat may be as good as any disease-fighting, immunity-boasting drugs. This isn't a new strategy. Cancer researcher Siddhartha Mukherjee recently told Business Insider, for centuries, diet was the only kind of medicine. When I was young, mm -hmm. and I kind of come a little bit before you, I'm talking about in the 40s, 50s, and yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's before. Most people, yeah. when you talk to them, never went to the doctor. Yes. They had no reason to go to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first and only time I ever went to the doctor is between Navet Road and, 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 and Bertrand Street. They yeah. had a little track, yeah. and it had this plum tree, a big, big plum tree. And every time we pass, my mother used to see all the fellas from the neighborhood on the tree. You know what they used to do? They used to play catch on the tree. Okay. So they come in at you, and they touch you, yeah. and then you to catch. Everybody yeah. else going up in the tree. So it was like a monkey thing, because it had all these sets of yeah. uh, um, leaves. Yeah. So my mother, don't you dare. Yeah. Don't you dare let me ever hear yours on that, you know. So I come in home and like all good sons, yeah. right? Yeah, let's I went to play catch, yeah. right? And the rain started to fall. And because we are macho, yeah. uh, you know that is get slippery and you know, playing. And of course, I jumped to grab a branch and I slip and fall about 15 feet to the ground yeah. and dislocate my hand. Yeah. So I go on over and look at and say, look. I dislocate my hand. How oh, you do that? I was coming down the road and I slip on it and I put my hand back. <laughs> down to the hospital, right? Bam, they reset it and they put it in a cast and they say, come back in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. There's nothing uh, serious, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like there and I'm going up the road and there with my mother and the Indian woman who living in front. Yes. She said, neighbor, how you going? Yes. Is that right? She said, and how the boy who fall off the tree? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I get sell out fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I shall not continue the, the conversation yeah, 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 yeah. as to the whole you know, uh, the, the verbal um, um, torrent that came after that yeah. with a promise of licks when I get better. <laughs> mm. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yes, so he says, um, Mukherjee and other doctors have started leaning into using more targeted diets as medicine mm -hmm. for everything from improving longevity to developing better cancer cures. It turns out that one such helpful food comes from a root we pull right out of the ground. It's bright yellow, inexpensive plant called turmeric. Mm -hmm. You could probably buy it in a grocery store right now, either ground up in a spice aisle or hole near the onions, garlic and ginger. Turmeric has been consumed by massive swaths of people for centuries around the world. It's baked inside many curry dishes and slurped down in turmeric teas and creamy golden milk. You ever make turmeric tea? Yes. Nice, you know, especially mm. if you use, yeah, yet. Co I use coconut milk. Yes. Shot the stock turmeric root, a member of the ginger family gets its yellow coloring from a chemical called curcumin. It's probably, to the best of my knowledge, the most potent naturally occurring anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So you have joint pains and things like that? Yeah. Start drinking turmeric tea. RJ Goel, a biophysicist who, who researches cancer, told Business Insider. Goel, who grew up in India and, but started his research in the U.S. over two decades ago, wonder why 
in medical research capital of the world, cancer and, and disease rates were so much higher than in his home country. His research here over the past two decades suggests that curcumin, the bright yellow chemical that gives turmeric its character, characteristic hue, has serious health promoting properties that can play a key role in people keeping people disease free. I once read an article mm -hmm. of people who were living with HIV people and had sex, having regular sex, okay. but didn't get the disease. Okay. Used to eat plenty of curry. Oh. And they came up with the conclusion that it had to do with the curry and something mm -hmm. in the curry okay. that was causing it not to catch in the, in the system, you know? So it was, it was acting as a... As a, a barrier. Uh, yeah. Turmeric is found to reduce inflammation and nix free radicals in the body that can damage our cells, but that's not all. What turmeric does for your body and your brain, the, cumer, the curcumin compound found in turmeric is powerful enough that it can help relieve arthritic pains, break up tumors, right? And they have all the references here for where they got it. It promotes good blood flow. Yes, it, 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 it thins the blood, helps to move the blood easier, which helps protect against heart disease. Mm -hmm. The plant may even keep some brain plaques from forming, though more research on the front is needed. I will put a piece in that and say that they've done some, some studies. Yeah. And when you mix turmeric and ginger, both of them capable of removing the plaque from the brain, and mm -hmm. you, you drink it as tea, that um, mm -hmm. it does over a period of time begin to clear the plaque from out of the head. Mm -hmm. Some of Guell's studies in both animals and humans suggest that curcumin can also help kill stubborn, treat-resistant cancer, treatment-resistant cancer cells, and might make some cancers less resistant to chemotherapy in the first place. In some instances, patients can reduce their toxic chemotherapy doses as much as tenfold simply by coupling their treatments with curcumin. Goel said in one 2008 study, he even suggested we start calling it curcumin <laughs> because of its <laughs> wide range in health benefits, promoting healing, improving conditions such as osteoporosis and chronic kidney diseases and Alzheimer's. Goel isn't the only one who picked up on the medical effectiveness of the spice. The National Institutes of Health say research on the chemical compound is limited, but acknowledges that turmeric and the curcumin inside may help certain digestive disorders and arthritis. In 2016, a team of scientists from North Carolina and South Korea completed a systematic review of evidence to date that found that a one gram dose a day of turmeric could help treat arthritis. At the same dosage, Goel recommends for his patients. So if you take one gram of prepared um, turmeric mm. and the ginger, ginger helps to take away the pain. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's a much, it has a much better track record than other popular supplements on the market today, mm -hmm. including multivitamins. Mm -hmm which many scientific studies suggest are essentially useless. Show me a, singular study, a single study they ever done mm -hmm. saying that people who took a, multi a multivitamin pill did better. There's no study. Still many Americans pop non-herbal supplement pills like vitamins and fish oils. The unregulated US market of these non-herbal supplements are roughly $11.3 billion a year, according to Euromoto International. While the herbal supplement, mar uh, supplement market in the U.S., largely composed of botanical ingredients, including roots like turmeric, is much smaller, about 3.8 billion. There is growing evidence that people are starting to come around to turmeric's benefits. Today, BioSchwartz, a half-gram turmeric cumin pill, is number two bestseller among vitamins and minerals on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Taking supplements won't ever as good as eating whole foods. Studies have found that whole turmeric provides an extra anti-inflammatory anti boost over curcumin alone. But Goel says that taking a one gram supplement is a lot better than nothing. And he's a realist. He knows Americans won't ever eat yellow curries every single day. But that's not the case in India. Um, Every meal is yellow in India. It's simply a traditional Indian diet as ubiquitous as salt and pepper. They don't even recognize that it is protecting them from a lot of diseases. 
The yellow root is also in many other foods across Asia. The Chinese call it Jiang Huang. And in tons of Thai dishes too, from chicken soups to fried fish. Girls suggested that every adult could probably stand to get a little dose of turmeric or curcumin supplement after consulting their physician. It's even more important gradient for aging populations as a potent antioxidant that helps to protect cells. Mm -hmm. It's antimicrobial too. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd read it out. You know. Now, I have an article here mm -hmm. that, um, that opens a certain kind of study. Mm. Okay. Eating wheat fuels Staphylococcus, Clostridium, and Clamcellia growth. Those are gut bacteria that are not good for you. Okay. Let me give you an idea. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor, he gives you <coughs> an antibiotic. Yeah. The antibiotic gets rid of bacteria and you have bacteria in your gut. So it doesn't only kill the bad bacteria in your body, mm -hmm. it also kills the good bacteria in your intestines. Yes. Leaving big patches free. Yes. Right? So it's like you come and you clean up a whole heap of land, mm -hmm. clean out all the houses. Mm -hmm. What will happen is people will move in. Yes. Right? So he says that um, research indicates that consumption of wheat contributes to the growth of pathogenic bacteria in our, in our gut. Adding to the growing concern that wheat, which is often contaminated with the Roundup herbicide, is one of the worst foods to consume for gut health. A, a study, concerning study published in FEMS Microbiology Ecology says diversity of the cultiva culti cultivable human gut microbiome involved in gluten metabolism, isolation of microorganisms with potential interest for celiac disease, reveals something remarkable of the capabilities and liabilities of human gut bacteria called the microbiome Mm. when exposed to foods such as wheat. If we, when, you, when, when, when the gut bacteria kills and leaves it, mm. one of the things that happens is that the yeast mm -hmm. back, um, mm -hmm. fungus mm -hmm. is very opportunistic and it takes over. As soon as it takes over, you begin to get a preponderance of yeast. Now, when you have a preponderance of yeast and you eat food with a lot of um, carbohydrates and sugar, mm. when it hits the yeast, you use yeast to do what? To ferment stuff to make alcohol. Yes. So a person who has a lot of yeast will come and tell you that during the day, they feel foggy headed. Yes. They feel foggy headed because they're drunk on the alcohol that the intestines are making. And they prefer to eat a sandwich and a plate of food. Yes. Yes. So, and also it causes emotional turmoil. Yes. But beyond that, there is another bacteria mm -hmm. that loves to pair off with fungus. And that block, block bacteria is called the Clostridium bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Clostridium do? Mm. Clostridium eats the iron in your food. Mm -hmm. So, you come along now, you have yeast, and you have Clostridium growing with it, teaming up with it, and it starts eating out all the iron. It loves iron. Mm -hmm. Clostridium difficile, they call it. Mm -hmm. When it starts eating the iron, what happens to the person? And it happens mainly to women. They become anemic? They become anemic. Yeah. And they go to the doctor, and he, they're anemic, and they have yeast, and they have Clostridium. And what does he give them? Iron tablets. Iron pills. And they're still tired. Why? Because what he's doing is he's feeding, feeding the Clostridium bacteria. Yeah. So I have seen people come to me and say, what are you taking? Yeah. And they pull out a bag of pills and they have three different sets of iron. Mm -hmm. I what so well, I went to my doctor mm -hmm. and I was anemic and he gave me the iron and it didn't work. So he sent me to one specialist mm -hmm. who promptly see my anemia and give me iron tablets too. Right? And then he sent me to the blood specialist who promptly see me and give me iron tablets too. So now they're taking three sets of iron tablets, yeah. which now leads to constipation. Yeah. And it's still anemic. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like nobody knows the cause as to why the thing is going on mm -hmm. and how to take steps 
yeah, to get rid of the difficile and the and the and the um yeah but the, the, all the doctors have an automated response yeah that's, that's, that's what i'm saying yeah. and a lot of times your anemia has nothing to do with iron yeah. in in chinese medicine most of the herbal pills that you have mm. don't have any set of iron for building the blood it have a whole cross section of nutrients mm. that will help the blood to, to come back alive you know mm -hmm. but it, you can't see anywhere where it says iron mm. the only thing is where you have an iron deficient anemia mm. but the iron deficient anemia most of the time is caused by the clostridium bacteria yeah. so and feeding the gut iron will just make the make the gut worse yes because it strengthens the clostridium, which in turn strengthens the yeast. Mm. And then the yeast leaves and it goes down into the, into the uterus and all kinds of things like that. And then the person begins to, the hormone imbalance go and they begin to have heavy periods. And when they have heavy periods, mm. they then get cysts. And then they get fibroids. Yeah. And then they get endometriosis. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you, you watch the whole thing? So yeah, now, yeah. long ago, when they first started giving out antibiotics, the, the doctors used to prescribe probiotics after mm -hmm. in order to correct that imbalance. Mm -hmm. But like all things, familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. So now what you have is a whole yeast, um, you know, mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. running all over the place. And consequently that you have a whole anemia problem yeah. running all over the place. And sometimes you can look at, at somebody walking around and you can tell they anemic. Eh? Yes. You could just tell. Sometimes you could tell that they have yeast problems too. Yes. If they have yeast problems real bad, they have a peculiar smell around them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he says that um, when you, when you um, reveal that, when you look at the gut micro, it reveals something remarkable over the capabilities and liabilities of human gut bacteria when exposed to foods such as wheat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says that they have. Now, when they, they took the wheat, the wheat was about, it used to grow about two to three feet tall, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they, they, they genic, genetically altered it, not modified, mm -hmm. right? In other words, they chose ones that would gradually make shorter plants with hybrids. bigger, bigger leaves, hybrids. hybrids yeah. Yeah. And they got where the, 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 the wheat plant is now only about a foot tall. And mm -hmm. when it has seeds and things on it, yeah. right? It, it bends down, it has so much on it. But in doing that, they changed the protein content of the wheat. In other words, the tough that they married it with, right, mm -hmm. had a type of protein uh, that caused celiac problems. Okay. So then you have celiac disease. So you have celiac disease. Okay. Right. And you have celiac disease from that kind of wheat. Mm -hmm. If you went back and you went back to the old original wheat that you had back in the 1930s, mm. you don't get celiac disease. Right. And the, that wheat had a name. Um, oh, what do you call it? What do you call that wheat now? Spelt. Is spelt. No, no. Spelt is a, 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 different, a, a thing. different thing. Yes. Okay. So he says, um, just one pro problematic protein as well as we were found metabolizable through if 94 strains of, of bacterial species isolated from the human gut via fecal sampling. This discovery is all the more interesting when you consider that according to Alessio Fasano, Fasano, the medical director of the University of Maryland Center for Celiac Research, the human gene does not possess the ability to produce enzymes capable of sufficiently breaking down the gluten that we now have in the new wheat. Okay. So in other words, you breed that to get more production and to help with anybody who gets sick. Right? We do not have the enzymes to break, the, uh, break it down. It all depends upon how well our intestinal walls close after we ingest it and how our immune system reacts to it. A new study helps to fill the knowledge gap as to how humans are capable of dealing with wheat consumption at all, considering it did not play a role in diets of non-Western people until very recently. Okay. When you were young, you didn't used to eat no set of bread. No. Right? In the morning, you might have a piece. If, you know. And lots of times you have, you have provision left over from the night before, mm. and you would eat that instead of the bread. Yeah. Hmm? Because flour at that time was expensive yeah. compared to the money that you used to get. 
And most of the time you have fig tree in the back and you have some dashing bush and some arrows and all the yam. Yeah, yeah. You live off the land, yeah. And, and in fact, when you want yam, you didn't go in the market, you, you went up San Fernando Hill yeah. in the mango patch and you dig out a bag of yam and bring it down. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey. He says, and even in those who have consumed it for hundreds of generations, it is still on a bi bi biological scale of time, a relatively new food in the human diet which was grain-free for 99.999% of human evolution. Now we have analyzed in a previous essay the dark side of wheat. wheat. The consumption of wheat is a relatively recent dietary practice, stretching back only 10,000 years, in nanosecond in biological time. We simply have not had the time to genetically adapt to its consumption, at least not without experiencing at least 200 empirically confirmed, confirmed adverse health effects. Okay. That's from eating flour. Yeah, flour. And we're all addicted to flour. Well, most of us. Yeah. Wow. The new finding reported here shows that bacteria in our microbiome extend our ability to digest physiologically incompatible foods, or at least tolerate them to the degree that they don't outright kill us. This may explain why there is such a wide variability in responses to gluten mm -hmm. and why the health of our microbiome may play a, if not the, 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 the central role in determining our levels of susceptibility to its adverse effects. Another provocative finding of the study is that some of the strains capable of breaking down the more immunotoxic pesticides in pesticides peptides in wheat, including the 33 amino acid long peptide known as a 33 mare, are highly pathogenic, such as the Clostridium botulinum, the bacteria that is capable of producing botulism. As we discussed in a previous article on Monsanto's Roundup herbicide, contributing to the overgrowth of this pathogenic strain of bacteria in animals exposed to GMO feed. Mm -hmm. It takes only 70 billionth of a gram to kill a person weighing 75 grams, 160 pounds, 65 pounds. It is estimated that only one kilogram would be enough to kill the whole entire human population. Are we talking about the, the glyphosate? Yeah, we're talking about the, the, the Clostridium botulinum, mm. that it makes a, a, a botulism and that it, it mm. is extremely poisonous. Wow. So when it makes its little bit in our gut, you know, a few billions of a gram, yeah. it causes a whole heap of pain. There are several implications of this finding. First, the consumption of wheat preferentially favors the growth of the pathogenic bacteria in the gut. Second, given that much of the Western diet now contains Roundup herbicide contaminated food, including wheat, where Roundup is used as a pre-harvest desiccant. You remember telling you that? Yes. spray to get yes. it dry. Yes. To dry it. To Virtually dry. guaranteeing it's contaminated with it despite being non-GMO. So a non-GMO farmer who have m moist wheat could end up saying, hey, let me spray my wheat to dry it out mm -hmm. and harvest it and carry it. So he now go with a, 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 a non-GMO crop yes. loaded with glyphosate. Mm -hmm. So... So contamination across the board. The, the amplifying effect of this pathogenic bacteria in those who consume both wheat and, and GMO foods is synergistic toxicity. This may help to explain why the mass introduction of GMOs over the past decade has contributed to an explosion in diagnoses of gluten sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Additionally, a recent article by Dr. Kelly Brogan, MD, discusses how the hunter-gatherer microbe microbiome is conspicuously low in the Clostridium bacteria family. Based on research into the modern hunter-gatherer Hasda gastrointestinal formula, the study indicates that for much of our evolution, the vast major majority of it, Clostridium was not present in significant quantities in our body, likely because their diet does not encourage it. In other words, the diet doesn't provide food for the Clostridium yeah, bacteria. Yeah, it's an it's an oculant. From the perspective of our an, yeah. an ancestral microbiome, mm -hmm. modern humankind has become more, almost a new species due to the reliance of novel new foods like wheat 
and agrochemical contaminated GMOs that have contributed to the development of a relationship of strains of bacteria that were alien to us. For some population, even a 100 million protein coding genes versus 23,000 for the human body alone. The shift towards pathological strains may have to do both with a radical change in the human diet to a grain-based one and particularly a wheat-based grain. And again, the ever-expanding consumption of Roundup herbicide-laden food. So what does it mean? Where do we go from here? The study adds to a growing body of research showing that wheat is toxic to everyone and not only to those with celiac disease by forcing our body to become inhabitants of strains of bacteria that we've never before needed to occupy our bodies, which are capable of doing great harm. It can lead to a wide range of health problems such as infections, intestinal diseases mm. that conventional medical thinking never connect to the diet. While some of the strains that degrade gluten are non-pathogenic, 39% um, of them are mostly from the lactobacillus family, taken as a whole, the discovery that a variety of Clostridium strains, as well as related potentially pathogenic strains from genuses such as Klebsiella, Klebsiella Staphylococcus, thriving a wheat-based diet and adding in fact that GMO, it seems that the pathway towards optimal health requires the elimination of both. So here we're talking about the fact that what you eat stimulates. Mm. If you have a person and they like a lot of sugar, mm. they will stimulate fungi. Because yeah. fungi and sugar is great, great friends. Mm -hmm. Cut down the sugar. If you have somebody and they have chronic yeast that has gotten into the whole system, yes. the first thing you have to do is to shut them off sugar completely. And yeah. then give them stuff, iodine and, and um, all, all the, all the anti, antifungals. Mm -hmm. Right? To, to help to get rid, rid of the fungus. And that is a tedious problem. Mm -hmm. It takes long to get it out of the system. Yes.